Thank you for having me in your very important conference. The COP26 in Glasgow has already started with an important challenge raising, namely methane. By concluding a global agreement on reducing methane emissions, we can provide a new era of fast-track reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Methane is a powerful greenhouse gas warming the planet 80 times as much as carbon dioxide over a period of 20 years before decaying to CO2. COP26 in Glasgow is now opening a window of opportunity. In addition, Pope Francis has argued world leaders to take radical decision at COP26. Climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic have exposed our deep vulnerability and raised numerous doubts and concerns about our economic systems and the way we organize our societies, Pope said, adding that leaders attending the COP26 conference in Glasgow must offer concrete hope to future generations. After the announcement of the President of the Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, and the US President Joe Biden of the Global Methane Pledge, we must step up our efforts in order to address Paris Agreement targets. It is a very important moment to see what the reactions of the other major global players will be. Australia rejects Global Methane Pledge, led by the European Union and the United States, as I have already mentioned, to cut methane emissions by 30% by 2030 due to concerns about the impact of farming. However, New Zealand, another major methane emitter through its dairy and ships industries, may join 2,000 other countries in signing the Global Methane Pledge. Some of the most vital countries to the methane effort have not indicated support to the initiatives. That includes the world's top three methane emitters, which is China, Russia and India. It is our challenge to take them on board and conclude a global binding agreement. We, here in the European Union, have to start working intensively in order to prepare the legislative framework as soon as possible and also to engage all relevant stakeholders. Methane emissions reduction should be a top priority in the EU climate diplomacy and therefore we should take such actions in the framework of the EU's diplomatic and external relations, particularly through the UN-based pathway, to spearhead a binding international agreement on methane mitigation, promoting coordinated actions to reduce methane emissions and to update methane mitigation requirements. More than half of global methane emissions stem from human activity in three sectors. It is energy, waste and agriculture. In this framework, it is important to proceed with an ambitious revision of our environmental legislation. It is of utmost importance that all methane emitting sectors reduce their emissions. At the same time, we need to ensure a just transition for sectors where methane emissions reduction may have socio-economic impacts. We should provide a fair, comprehensive and clear legislative framework setting binding measures and methane reduction targets covering all sectors, leading to a significant reduction of methane emissions in the EU by 2030. The upcoming methane regulatory measures should strive to achieve significant emissions reduction swiftly and as cost-effectively as possible and provide incentives and support to companies to achieve performance standards in an optimal manner while fully respecting the polluter pays principle. A strong, independent and significantly rigorous monitor, reporting and verification system is central to address methane emissions, especially in the energy sector. It is necessary to provide credible data, identify issues and deficient measures and assess the progress achieved. A mandatory MRV system would also improve member states' reporting to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. A strong leak detection and repair program is a critical element of the EU's strategy to reduce methane emissions and achieve the EU climate and environmental goals. We also have to support the establishment of an independent international and also methane emissions observatory in partnership with the United Nations Environment Programme, the Climate and Clean Air Coalition and the International Energy Agency. In this regard, it is of paramount importance to proceed with immediate and rapid reduction in methane emission paying attention to economic and social sustainability. In this decade, it is one of the most effective measures for EU climate action. Methane emission reduction complements the necessary reduction in carbon dioxide emissions, and many of the emissions cuts required by the Paris Agreement could already be achieved, particularly in the energy sector, with low cost and technically feasible methane mitigation. The UN 
EP's global methane assessment monetized global benefits for all markets and non-market impact at the period of 2021 to be approximately $4,300 per ton of methane reducing and that approximately is 1,430 annual premature deaths could be prevented per million ton reduced. It's not only the energy, but also the agriculture and the waste sector contributed to methane emissions. In this regard, we have to establish a framework which provides business cases and incentivizes and rewards farmers and waste management by reducing methane emissions and rejecting biomethane along with the entire value chain and especially front runners for their efforts. Reducing methane will now avoid nearly 0.3 Celsius degree of warming by 2045. The immediate implementation of methane reduction measures on human sources could reduce methane emission as much as 45% by 2030. That would vastly reduce the formation of and exposure to ground level ozone. As the President of the Commission declared, at COP26 we will reach out to global partners to bring as many as possible on board on tackling methane emissions. With the EU Green Deal and EU Methane Strategy, we are ready to lead the way. It is time to act now. By reducing methane emissions, we can get a quick win for protecting our people and the environment. Let's do it together.